All righty. Uh, good afternoon again. The, we're now going to start the public board meeting. Uh, the board meeting of the public, uh, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey and its component units is now being called to order. Today's in-person meeting is also being held virtually via uh, video conference with the proceedings live stream from the Port Authority website. On September 12th, the Audit Committee and the Committee on Finance met in executive session. Earlier today, the Committees on Operations met in public and executive, and the Committees on Finance and Capital, Planning, Execution, and Asset Management met in executive. Their reports will be filed with the official minutes of today's board meeting. The Commissioners also met in executive session earlier today to discuss matters related to the security or public safety, or uh, matters related to the purchase, sale, or lease of real property where disclosure would affect the value thereof or the public interest matters related to personnel and personnel procedures and matters involving ongoing negotiations or reviews of contracts and proposals. So for the first, um, I think the first thing we need to talk about today is 9-11. Uh, we just uh, honored uh, last Wednesday uh, and, and recognized the 23rd anniversary of uh, horrific events that occurred 9-11 in 2001. I think it's important today that we uh, take a moment to remember those that were lost in that horrific day. Uh, particularly, we have to remember the 84 uh, colleagues, our co-workers at the Port Authority who perished, along with the, and in that 84, the 37 Port Authority police officers. Uh, we'd also like to remember the first responders and recovery workers who, who have died as a result of 9-11 related illnesses. And we also ask you to, um, Pray and keep in mind those individuals who are with us who are suffering from 9-11 related illnesses and some folks uh, who are with us here uh, that uh, work for the Port Authority as well. I also want to remind everybody that this year marks the 31st, 31-year uh, anniversary of the bombing of 1993 uh, in the World Trade Center. And we lost uh, six individuals uh, along with a, a pregnant employee, the Port Authority, four Port Authority employees. So if we can ask everyone to stand and have a moment of silence for those two events. Thank you. Um, last week, um, and we don't call it a celebration, it's a recognition, it's an, it's an embrace, it's a remembrance. The Port Authority has been evolving and how we deal with the tragedy, the recognition, uh, the never forget, dealing with family members, dealing with the Port Authority employees uh, that have to live with uh, what's occurred from 31 years ago, 23 years ago. And the Port Authority has a couple of events that I think are really special. Uh, starting with the week before, there's the, the pillars recognition. There's 11 employees who are recognized and given awards in, I think, six different categories. And they are given awards as leaders uh, in the name of those 84 employees that passed away. Uh, it's really a special moment, and, and senior staff and Rick and I and the employees get together and honor those employees. And it's a special moment. Um, it's special in terms of its recognition. It's also uh, anointing and recognizing future leaders, but most importantly, it allows us to communicate um, our uh, emotions and our recognition of the uh, passage of those 84 uh, employees. Um, there's a number of other events, and, and there's, a, there's a PATH event, there's an event at St. Nicholas Church, there's a very special mass at St. Peter's, which is dedicated just to the Port Authority uh, family, which I think is so special. And I'm hoping maybe next year we can kind of maybe create a timeline. Uh, Rick and I would like to get to all of them. And then, Rick, we finished our 9-11 our uh, in Jersey City, uh, honoring the Port Authority Police Department and the families, family members who were affected by 9-11. Um, I'm hoping maybe, Ed, you and Greg could kind of work out. I'd like to go to the PATH event. I've never been to that before just because the time is not really allowing us to get shuffled back and forth. But I'd really like to take some time. And, and recognize the PATH event in the St. Nicholas's Church if it's possible. Uh, the other event which I think needs to be recognized is um, uh, the ceremony, the Rose Ceremony, which was uh, done, I think, the Thursday before 9-11. And that, to me, it's been around, I guess, this is the fourth year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we gather down by the reflecting pools, and we gather with a small number of our employees, and I'm hoping that number grows next year. And we are each given a yellow rose 
and with the name of a Port Authority employee that passed <laughs> away in 2001 and those that passed away in 1993. And we're, there's a couple of brief words uh, from the rabbi. And each person, you get to take the rose, read the name, uh, and kind of feel uh, who that person was. And we have a discussion amongst the more senior Port Authority employees what that person's job was, what they did. And there's always somebody, uh, whether it's Lily and Steve or a number of folks who just bring that person to life. And this year the theme was like, say their name and tell their story. And we just had that. It was really special. I know Commissioner Fine was there. And Commissioner, you may want to share some of the kind words you said and the feelings and emotions that you experienced as we were walking through the rose ceremony. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I... Thank you. I was so touched and honored to be at the rose ceremony which was a beautiful ceremony and i hope you'll all have a chance to participate i felt how important it was to remember and to have a ritual where we gather and say people's names and think of people not just part of a big tragedy but as individuals and these are individuals who sacrificed their life for the port authority and it was great to see colleagues and family members there uh, to honor them and to recognize their sacrifice, but also all the Port Authority employees every day honor these individuals who are lost by working at the Port Authority, working to, you know, to meet the goals and, and, and respect the, the, law, the, the service of these individuals who are lost, and to carry on with the traditions and a commitment to excellence. And that's really the greatest way to honor your colleagues, and we really appreciated everybody who participated. Thank you, Commissioner Fun. Anybody else want to be heard? Um, moving ahead, and, and obviously that, you know, 9-11 has defined us as in, in my service here and our service here. It, um, Listen, it stays with you every day, and I think one of the, some of the comments Rick and I had at the St. Peter's Church is I think everything we do as an agency, everything, every act, every movement, uh, every positive project, every show of compassion, professionalism, is all dedicated uh, for the folks who have come before us, whether they worked 60 years ago, 80 years ago, but most importantly, we do that in recognition of those who have passed both of those tragedies. Um, 31 years ago and, and 23 years ago. And I think that hangs with us and I think we use it as a, as a point of uh, motivation and, uh, and it's our North Star <coughs> moving in the right direction. Um, while we're on this note, I also want to uh, take a moment to have a moment of silence to share that we have lost one of our employees, a 22-year employee at PATH, Tennyson Lewis, passed away August 28th. He joined the port in 2001. Um, and when people talk about uh, Tennyson, um, they say two things. He paid attention to detail, and he's extraordinarily dedicated to his job. So if we could just have a moment of silence for Tennyson. Thank you. Um, last moment of silence, and it's unusual. We have three. Is something that... Um, some of us have lived with the, there's a giant, legislative giant, uh, Bill Pascrell, Congressman Pascrell, who passed away uh, at the age of 87. He served 14 terms in, uh, in Congress. Uh, I've known the Pascrell family for almost 40 years, served in the assembly with then Assemblyman Pascrell, was an aide to the assembly when he was, uh, you know, starting out. And uh, he was actually our congressman. He was just a, a force of nature. When I tell you, uh, regardless of your political party, he was the most dynamic uh, show of force, very um, forceful in terms of his representation of the constituents. His constituent service was unbelievable. He was a huge uh, proponent and supporter of labor, um, a huge, huge influence. We have lost a giant uh, in New Jersey, and he'll be sadly missed. And I ask everyone to stand for a moment for Congressman Pascrell. All right, thank you. 
All right, at this time, unless anyone wants to comment, uh, we're going to move ahead and hear from our executive director. And you could provide your report, Rick. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, commissioners, the agency finished the summer with very strong volumes that are across our, our facilities. The airports set an extraordinary record for the busiest summer travel period in the history of the agency. The seaport continued its strong performance and maintained its position as the second busiest port in the nation. And we hit a key milestone in the local permitting process related to the Midtown Bus Terminal Replacement Project. Before turning to these subjects, I want to say thank you, as we always do, to the employees of the agency who enable our facilities to function at the high level that they do. We are also thankful and grateful to the two-thirds of our workforce that is represented by unions and to the leaders of those 23 unions that represent our workforce. As you've noted, Mr. Chairman, on a more somber note, the agency in the course of the last 10 days has come together in our various rituals to acknowledge the 23rd anniversary of September 11, 2001, and to recommit ourselves this and every year to our promise to honor those who lost their lives on September 11, 2001 at the 93 World Trade Center bombing and those who have suffered 9-11 related illnesses and to never forget their sacrifice. Turning to our facility operating volumes, at the airports, 2024 was the region's busiest summer ever for air travel, with volumes exceeding 40 million passengers, surpassing the record previously set in the summer of 2023. Individually, JFK and LaGuardia set records for total passengers throughout the summer, and both JFK and Newark set records for the volume of international travelers. The first half of the summer was our busiest, but this August still handled comparable value, volumes to August 2023's record levels and a record number of international travelers passing through our three airports. Okay. At the seaport, June and August were both strong months for the, I'm sorry, July and August were both strong months for the seaport with cargo volumes exceeding 2019 volumes by more than 10%. July was particularly strong, setting a record for the busiest July of all time as retailers prepared for back to school and holiday shopping and heavier shipments given the shadow of the potential for an East Coast port strike. Throughout the summer, the port has maintained its status as a number two port in the nation. Our bridges and tunnels through the, throughout the summer had vehicular volumes that continued to meet or exceed pre-pandemic levels. And at PATH, PATH's ridership throughout the summer was steady with volumes at approximately two-thirds of pre-COVID 2019 volumes. The high point of the summer was the systems hitting on July 4th the highest ridership since 2013. That was the last year that Macy's fireworks were launched from the Hudson River before this summer. At the Midtown Bus Terminal Replacement Project this week, that project took an important step forward in the local New York City permitting <coughs> Euler process when the project was presented at a public hearing of the City Planning Commission. The CPC is targeting a vote on the application at their next meeting scheduled in October. With respect to the JFK redevelopment and uh, the extraordinary construction activity that is uh, happening there, uh, the $19 billion redevelopment is in full swing with the busiest period of construction taking place this summer and next summer. On top of the, hap, hap, the heavy construction period, the region, as I've noted, saw the busiest summer in the nation's history in terms of passenger volumes. To mitigate the compounding impacts of construction and heavy passenger levels on the JFK roadway network, the agency implemented several key traffic mitigation programs. The airport functioned well over the summer, though the traveling public did encounter during peak periods, uh, uh, traffic congestion. 
We continue to ask the traveling public for patience while this heavy construction is underway and apologize for any inconvenience that the congestion causes. I want to thank the JFK Aviation and Redevelopment teams and the Port Authority Police Department for their hard work. In fact, I'd like to thank all Port Authority staff at all of our facilities for their hard work and commitment during the just, the just concluded summer travel season. I do want to comment briefly on cybersecurity. That cyber threat landscape continues to evolve and intensify. The agency remains hyper-focused on our preparedness and security posture. Throughout the remainder of the year, the Port Authority will take multiple concrete steps to further this agenda, and in particular, the agency will work with all of our third-party vendors concerning cyber security protections. Finally, a brief comment uh, on the seaport. We are obviously aware of the threatened ILA strike at all East Coast and Gulf Coast ports. We have expressed the strong hope and desire that both sides will reach an agreement. But in case there is a strike, and it looks likely, the Port Authority has been in communication with our tenants and port stakeholders to develop a strike contingency plan involving the safe shutdown and management of all facilities at the port. With that, Mr. Chairman, I conclude my report. Thank you. Any uh, comments or questions from uh, commissioners? All righty. Thank you very much for the report, Rick. Uh, now we're going to start with the public uh, speaking portion. As we do that, we're first going to hear from Patrick Donovan, uh, who is uh, from Major Capital Projects, and we're going to hear from uh, Brad Haber uh, Haberlin from Moonaki. They're going to speak about a very special program that's been going on for a number of years, the Navy SEAL Hudson River Swim that took place in August. And after their presentation, they're going to present this board with a special <coughs> paddle, I'm told, uh, which is I mean, a good paddle. It's a good way, right, Patrick? <laughs> we like that. But this uh, swim, it's um, 350 people, seven employees from the Port Authority. I can't do justice to uh, the money that's raised, the awareness that's raised, uh, the $190 million that's been raised for Navy SEAL Foundation. So, Patrick, why don't you, by way of introduction, just talk about it, and maybe, Brad, you can give us a little bit uh, some context. And then after that, there's a short video to do some justice to what you folks actually did, which I don't think anybody on this podium would actually partake in, having seen what they've done. So, Patrick, walk us through what uh, what we're talking about here. Yep. Good afternoon. Thanks for, uh, for having us and uh, giving us a chance to uh, present and fill you in on this event. This is the, uh, the sixth year, past August. Uh, the first year we had about 34 participants in the water. Uh, it's grown every year to uh, 300 this past August. Um, it, Navy SEAL Foundation, as you said, is the, uh, the host. They uh, raise money and awareness for our special operations community and support those folks when they get back from, from overseas and their families and uh, any difficulties that they, they have and they've encountered as they migrate back and, and transition back to a uh, civilian life. Um, the event is about a three and a half mile swim with uh, a run in the beginning and a run at the end, totaling about another two and a half miles of run uh, to include 300 push-ups and uh, about 150 pull-ups at different stops along the way. Um, but I, I think it really ties into what you were uh, speaking about before with 9-11 and, and bringing it all together, right? There's, there's a lot of first responders, a lot of military members, and uh, to end at the World Trade Center where most of those people have some ties to, whether they have family that was there on 9-11, a lot of them, or they went into the military for that reason because of 9-11, and to, uh, to end the event there uh, really brings it all together. Um, but I'm gonna turn it over to Brad for a second who's, uh, who swam the event the last couple of years and, uh, and let him fill you in a little bit as well. Thanks, Pat. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, everybody, for having us. Uh, the Navy SEAL Swim across the Hudson is a, is a very important uh, event. It, it honors, it, we always have it in, in August. It, it, it's right around 9-11. We try to keep it around that time to, to honor the, the victims of 9-11 and keep, keep, raise awareness to that. It starts in uh, uh, Liberty State Park at the Empty Sky Memorial. We, we, we have a big ceremony to start, to kick it off. We say some prayers, we have some, some speakers. We do a mile and a half flag run. We have the parachuters come in and, uh, and drop down with American flags. We jump in there, 
we swim to the Statue of Liberty. As you're swimming in the Hudson across the statue and you're looking up, you can't help but to be completely in awe and amazed of, of, of being that close to it and just remembering uh, you know, the people that have come to this country and uh, across that river. And then we swim to the bars there, climb up, do 22 pull-ups, 100 push-ups. We swim, uh, we jump back in, we swim to Ellis Island. Again, you know, we, we uh, you know, pay tribute to everybody that's, that's come across into this great nation. And um, we climb up to that bar to do 22 pull-ups, 100 push-ups. And then we swim to South Cold Marina, Lower Manhattan. That's about a two-mile leg. And we uh, get out, we do a mile flag run down to the World Trade Center. We do our final 22 and 100 and we have our closing ceremonies. We go down to the, to the reflection ponds, we say a prayer at the uh, reflection ponds where the World Trade Center uh, stood, and then uh, we disperse from there. So it's a, it's a great event. The Port Authority is, is, a, is an amazing uh, contributor to, to logistics and, and setting everything up, so we can't thank you guys enough for your participation and, you know, and, and support during this event. See, Brett, other than the Port Authority, New Jersey State Police, New York State Police, NYPD, FDNY, FBI, Jersey City PD, Coast Guard, Pennsylvania State Police, New York Park Police, and other agencies in Weehawk and uh, Bayonne, I mean, that's a huge collection of our law enforcement uh, brothers and sisters. Um, talk about your background. Which, when I sat and, and, and talked with you in my office, um, Brad, you blew me away. You just literally blew me away about what you've done things you've overcome both in service and after service. So just talk about what you've done and just share some of your experience with this board. Uh, yeah, I, was in, um, I was in a private sector of, uh, of security for a long time, and then I got into uh, corrections. I was a state corrections officer in Norway State Prison. I got out in about 2014. I started doing mortgages, big change there. But, um, and then, uh, you know, I had, I had a pretty serious injury a couple years ago. I, uh, I lost my left hand in a, in a construction accident. Uh, Bill Brown started to swim uh, six years ago. And when I was laying in a hospital, I, I, I'm not the type of person that is what was me. I want to get back out there and I want to, you know, figure it out. And the people I allowed to come see me in the hospital were people that were going to, you know, push me in that direction. And Joe Palermo... There's another friend of ours that's a big, a, a big uh, a participant in the event. He's an Army Ranger, and Bill Brown, Navy SEAL, and some other guys. And that's when that's when uh, Joe was telling me about the the uh, Baton Death March, uh, Memorial Death March, which is a 26 mile, 45 pound rucksack uh, race in the desert uh, in New Mexico at White Sands Missile Range. So I did that about eight months after my injury, and then I said to Bill, I want to do the swim. So I did the swim uh, a couple months after that. And it was uh, it was it was a battle, um, you know. I had to figure out a lot of stuff with um, you know strokes and you know figure out my hand and, and how to swim, and uh, you know I need shoulder replacement on this side too. I had back surgery, I had a lot of injuries, uh, so I had a lot to figure out. So I started in March in the pool, and uh, you know overcome that, and um, you know really just uh, wanted to prove to myself and, and prove to everybody, my, my children, my family, and everybody else that you know you can't get you can't get beat down. Life's going to happen. You're going to get you're going to get beat up, and you have to figure out the next step and overcome it and keep pushing forward and, and, and making things right and doing positive things in this community. And, and um, you know, then actually last year I decided to run for council. I, I won a council seat in Munaki. So, um, you know, in, in one year after the, after the event, um, you know, I did, the, I did the Baton Death March. I did Navy SEAL swim, coached my daughter's T-ball team. I ran for council and won. Um, and knocked off a four-time incumbent. I, I was, uh, uh, you know, nobody really gave me a shot, but, um, you know, I, I did a lot of other stuff too. So I just try to keep mo moving and, um, you know, and, and creating a positive message out there. Well, Brad, you're an inspiration to many of us, and thank you for being part of this, and thank you for your profile, you and uh, Patrick. Amazing. Uh, and you volunteer your time, Patrick, to do this. Uh, great, great effort, and uh, we couldn't be more appreciative. So at this time, if we could, first of all, round of applause for these two. If you're Rick, if you want to join us, they're going to give a presentation to the, the board. Will the commissioners come on out? Patrick, Greg, come on up. We'll run up over here. So you can explain what this is. So this is on, uh, on behalf of Bill Brown, who's the, uh, the founder and the lead SEAL for the event. And 
and uh, the Navy SEAL Foundation, like I said, hosts the event. Um, so they made this for for you guys, for all your support and, and dedication for letting us help and, and Port Authority support for the event, uh, along with the, all the other employees that, that help and, and support it in Port Authority Police. So they wanted to uh, us to present this to, to you guys and the board and, and the executive director for for all your support. Incredible. Incredible. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I sat down with the uh, with the chairman and um, uh, explained to him that we, uh, we we all signed some flags before the event when everybody's coming in, flying in from all over the country and sometimes the world. Uh, this is an American flag that all participants in the swim signed, and it's also a uh, a, 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 a New York City Seal Swim coin that we give out too that I like to present to you as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you folks for coming, appreciate it. Um, this is like amazing. This is amazing what you can do, what you have done. You're an inspiration to us all. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Alrighty, folks. I hear you're going to be doing it no. next year. No, okay. no, 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 no. We've got to get somebody. To do I know. All right, it's now time to um, uh, hear from the public. Uh, we're providing an opportunity for members of the public to comment. Chairman, on yeah. I, I thought you wanted the video. I'm sorry. You're right. Thank you. Go to the video. Here's a little news flash for you. Almost every seal hates swimming. <laughs> we have a kind of a saying, be your brother's keeper, you know? We definitely look out for each other. Yeah! Woo! 2019, Bill had put this out there to a random group of SEALs. Well, I was a SEAL on 9-11, so that had a big, big impact on me. There she is. Statue of Liberty. Beautiful thing. I put out the flare. I said, hey, we're going to, you know, help raise some money to help veterans. We're going to send a positive message in our community. And four years in a row, my brothers and the SEAL teams came together to help other veterans. If that doesn't say who we are, nothing does. When we do something that usually involves some sick physical event. <laughs> Not a lot of people are going to get the opportunity to jump into the Hudson, swim to the Statue of Liberty, then swim to Ellis Island, and then into Manhattan. Woo! Jelly woo! The Navy SEAL Foundation event, really pretty cool. After my amputation, swimming was a whole lot easier than running, so I was like, okay, let's go swim the Hudson. Run, run, run. There'll be a run along the Liberty State Park. From there, we go into the water. Three one-mile swims. And then we do 100 push-ups and 22 pull-ups. And the pull-ups signify the 22 veterans that commit suicide every day. The people who are here represent people who can't be here. We just need to get people back together and understand that there's a cost to that freedom. This swim represents that cost. I know what we're doing helps a lot of veterans. It's very rare to have that experience where guys with similar background all coming back together to do this thing, a swim. Ah, one! Motivating, cultivating, and inspiring one another for the fundraising component of the veterans and the camaraderie. Ah, don't throw me in. Oh. <laughs> Laughing and, and telling stories and having an amazing time. Feels so good, man. Year number four. Amazing. Amazing. It's a bunch of guys who truly believed in patriotism and freedom and were willing to go fight and be wounded and lose friends 
in order to hopefully preserve the freedom we have as a nation. Let's honor these guys we lost, man. It's going to be amazing. PAPD, the Porter Guard, NYPD, FDNY, the Coast Guard. When I look at the roster of all the men and women who come to do the swim, that's what makes this event beautiful. I wasn't a SEAL, I was in the Air Force. I'm an Army guy, Green Beret. I'm actually a trooper with the Pennsylvania State Police. I was in the uh, Army in the Vietnam War. It's uh, important to me to show this respect and the love for other service members, and nobody's tougher than SEALs. Being a SEAL, being a frogman is important to me, but that's over with. I think what my job now is to help those who weren't as fortunate as I am, and I'll continue to do that. As until the day I check off the net. Being victorious and glorious with your brothers is a beautiful thing, you know. All these great people come together to help other veterans, to respect and honor all those other great Americans, to respect all the great ideals and beliefs that those iconic monuments represent for our nation. It's an amazing and epic event. We set an example for an entire nation today. And I'm grateful, thank you. Yeah! So, good luck tomorrow. Thank you for your service. I know, I gotta swim. <laughs> <laughs>so you know they told us we were gonna have the video they said it's like a four or five minute video before i saw it i told staff i go you got to cut that down to like two or three minutes they came back to me and they said we can't cut a thing i said we just can't cut a thing then you look at it, you can understand why but i tell you it, i am moved i have goosebumps uh bread and just just looking at that it's just astonishing it talks about their service and what they've done for our country both today and yesterday and, and decades ago so thank you again for sharing that thank you, much appreciated all right, now we're going to go to uh, members of the public who want to comment on Port Authority matters. This public comment period, which may be limited to 30 minutes in total, provides an opportunity for members of the public to present their views directly to the board, but does not provide for a dialogue. Members of the public wishing to discuss a specific matter, please talk to Port Authority staff, and uh, we'll contact you. They'll, they'll contact uh, you directly or put you in contact with the Public Affairs Department. Speakers are asked to comply with a fixed time of no more than three minutes. Our first speaker is Sophia Harris who has to go to work, I'm told, so we're putting Sophia to the front. Sophia, where do you got to work after this? Um, back at the airport. Okay. <laughs> okay. We want to get you there on time, so you're first. Welcome. There you go. Thank you. So I'm reading on behalf of Yvette Stevens. She was supposed to, this is her story. So um, she, has, she had an emergency. So I've been a security guard at Newark Airport for, eight, for the last eight years. First, First, I want to thank you for the opportunity for being here today, for your time. I want to thank you for, for what you have been doing for the airport workers for the past, raising wages and the standard for us. Since I've been working at the airport, I've seen my hourly raise um, salary increase from $10 to $15 to 19 I am grateful for those increase, but this September 1st was the first year that I didn't get an increase. The reason that it is so important to get a raise right now is because $19 is not enough. Everything keeps going, getting more expensive. In addition, um, I, I have living expenses for some, for some medication, and, I, and that depend on my multiple sclerosis and my glaucoma. glaucoma. For, the past, uh, for this past March, I lost my fiancé of 20, 22 years who helped me with household expenses. As in May, I lost my daughter, and now I have a great-granddaughter that is the one that is one year old, and I have to take care of. I have been able to afford many expenses for her. Um, to make it worse, my work hours have been cut from full-time to part-time. When I get paid, after paying my rent, I have to decide which bill to pay. Getting a raise would be a big, a big difference for me and my co-workers, so many of whom are mothers, fathers, grandfathers. We are trying to make ends meet. I am here today for all of them. Many of my co-workers would, would want to be here today, but our work schedule. So I'm speaking, on, uh, I'm speaking not only on behalf of myself, but for my co-workers and airport workers when I say we earn and we deserve to get a raise now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mel Williams? Mel? Mel, not here? Okay. 
Sebastian Moon. Sebastian Moon. All righty. Christopher. Gref, Grief. Jim, this is the right list? Yeah. All right. This is right. video conference. Video conference, yeah. Christopher. Yeah. But they didn't annex it. Uh, Felicia Palmer. All right. How are we doing, Felicia? Good, thank you. I am a Jersey City resident. Uh, first of all, I want to give the shout out to the people on the second floor and all those downstairs and all of you folks who are here. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I, uh, I live downtown Jersey City. I've been here since 95. I want to comment about the uh, path service between Newark and World Trade Center as well as the general weekend service as well as make a small comment about TAP. So, uh, let me get to the part here. So the weekend service from World Trade Center to Newark is deplorable and abusive to customers. It's understandable that current construction at World Trade Center is resulting in delays. However, I'm not referring to that. I'm referring to the regular schedule that is on weekends. There is no reason a platform and train should be dangerously packed at 9.45 on a Sunday morning when I'm going to church, where people are going to work, where people are going in for a nice day in New York City. I have pictures, but I don't have them available printed, but I can certainly show those to you. This seems to be the same schedule, and as a matter of fact, I asked a PATH representative uh, if this was the case. It's the same schedule that's been on for the last 20 years and it has not kept up with the exploding demand and population in Jersey City. It's clear to me that no one from the board, from the PATH services, take the PATH, because you would be aware of what I'm talking about, and I'm sure we, you would do something about it if you knew what we were enduring. Uh, so I want to know, when is there going to be an update to the service uh, on weekends to accommodate the exploding population in Jersey City? Uh, I did hear earlier that um, the ridership is about 75% of what it was pre-COVID, and it's growing in all capacities. So there needs to be schedule changes to account for the fact that people are regularly leaving Jersey City and World Trade to go to World Trade Center on the weekends. Um, regarding TAP, I love the service. It's very convenient. I think a lot of people enjoy the convenience of using TAP. I think the only issue is that there really isn't a mechanism for customers to be able to track the taps and be able to determine whether they've been overcharged. Now, I did originally submit that this was an issue. I had an overcharge, but it turned out that my overcharge was with Omni, right? So Omni and PATH came out around the same time. And for a regular customer, we really can't tell the difference because it looks exactly the same. The point of the matter is that when I tap my card, unless I have an account with Omni, uh, with, with TAP, there's no way for me to track to see whether or not I've been overcharged. As a matter of fact, the charges show up from the day before, so you don't know if the TAP was from the day before or the, or the day of, so you can't really tell. So there needs to be a mechanism for folks who are regular, who don't have accounts, who are just tapping, to be able to notify that they have been overcharged and get a reconciliation. Thank, Thank you. you, Felicia. Appreciate it. Uh, just a note, many of us actually take the path, just for, we do take the path, just so. Okay, thanks. Murray Bowden? Murray? He's not here. Oh, he's here. He's here. He's here. Oh, is he? Yep. Over there. <clears throat> this is very difficult. This board is responsible for hiring and firing and the safety of the people in this area. When the rules are not followed, people die. I've been speaking about particular lines at the airports. Rick, it's your job that the people that work under you follow the law. They haven't been. I can't, I've tried for years to try and get people to get it right. Now that you're having self-driving <coughs> cars, people are distracted because they're reading their texts 
on their email and the light turns green and you all know somebody honks the horn because somebody wasn't paying attention. So when they look up, they need to see consistent lines. Rick, I've worked with your traffic consultant years ago. They were never implemented. When you built LaGuardia Airport, I had a whole series of suggestions that were information for the driver was never implemented. It's your job to see that they get implemented and the law is followed. And if they don't follow the law, your traffic engineer knows a lot about it, but he hasn't been implementing it, then you fire them and replace them. And if Rick doesn't fire them, it's this board's job to fire Rick. I've already asked the through aid authority to fire their chief executive, Frank, whatever his name is, because I've presented them with inconsistent, illegal lines that he doesn't correct. So where does the buck stop? I won't be here much longer. I'm fighting the onslaught of dementia. I've asked people to pull me off here if I talk too fast or too long. People come up to me and tell me stories about myself. I have no idea what they're talking about. There's a sign up there that says 26 minutes left because I said, when I'm talking to you, I talk to you. I don't watch the clock. I've arranged for somebody to tell them and take me out if I talk too long. So who's responsible for the law? Today, people look up, they need to see a yellow line on the left, a white line on the right. If you break the law, why should we follow it? One more second. There are cups, there are cafes on the tax right in front of you, all of you, and cups because plastic bottles are not out. And yet, the chairman of the board brings a plastic bottle. This young lady has a refillable bottle. I can't do it. It's obvious that we have global warming. You've said nice things, but you haven't followed up. I'm going. Thank you, Thank you Murray. Hudson Williams, please. Hudson, come on up. Good afternoon. My name is Hudson Williams. I'm a member of 32BJSCIU. SEIU. Um, I've been working at LaGuardia Airport for about nine years in a variety of roles. <coughs> Currently, I'm a wheelchair agent. My job is to make sure passengers get to and from the gates and to the curb to be picked up by their family or catch a cab or go to the parking lot. Sometimes we have more passengers than we have crew. So we have, in those days, I am moving quicker to accommodate every passenger. I know my job is important to the passengers. That's why I'm committed to my work. I need a raise right now because I have a family to support, a wife and children, and also I caretake for my 92-year-old mother. Given my current salary, which hasn't kept up with my expenses, I have fallen behind in my rent. In fact, I'm trying to prevent getting evicted. Between paying my rent, my day-to-day -day expenses, and even putting off things that I would do, my salary is simply too low to cover my expenses. Getting a raise right now would make a difference for me and my family. It would allow me to be able to get out of debt. I know the Port Authority has valued the work that we at the airport workers perform. We ask that you increase the wages for airport workers. Thank you. Thank you. Your role, Montrose. Huh? Next speaker. Thank you, Hudson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yukal Montrose. I work with the as a cabin agent at JFK for two years. My job requires me to clean a plane in between flights, a job that we allotted 12 to 15 minutes to complete. It's a hard job, 
to complete within that time frame, but I get it done, as do my co-workers. As passengers and flight yourselves, you know the importance of having a clean plane to board. It's an essential part of keeping passengers moving and getting to their destination. As important as my job is, though, I don't get paid enough. I don't make enough to make ends meet. With everything being more and more expensive, I struggle. My salary is barely enough to cover my, necess my necessities, rent, groceries, and other bills. If I was paid more, I could afford to live a larger, in a larger apartment and I could think about traveling. I could improve my health because I wouldn't have to worry as much about being able to afford a specialist when I need one. I've watched my sister achieve her American dream. She has been able to buy her home. I dreamt about making that a reality for me, but I need more money to even be able to save towards that dream, and I can't do that on my current salary. Airport workers are the backbone of the airport, and we ask you, show the same leadership show, you've shown before and increase airport workers' salary. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for what you do. Appreciate it. Anna Humphrey? Anna? Good afternoon, members Good afternoon. of the board. My name is Anna Humphrey, and I'm the Transportation <coughs> Community Organizer for the Center for Independence of the Disabled New York, or Sydney for short. I am testifying today on behalf of Sydney regarding urging the Port Authority to raise wages and benefits for airport service workers, specifically those who support passengers with disabilities. These workers are essential to the smooth operation of the Port Authority and the dignity of passengers with disabilities. They ensure that travel is accessible and manageable for everyone, guiding people with vision disabilities to the correct gate and assisting them before their flights by helping them get meals and knowing the locations of restrooms. These workers also assist people with a myriad of disabilities such as mobility, medical, intellectual, developmental, sensory, emotional, and behavioral disabilities. These workers must be trained regarding the specific disability related language to use, disability etiquette, how to use equipment required for disability related transport, and how to assist a person with a disability appropriately with dignity and respect. One of these essential tasks is transporting people using wheelchairs in, to and from their seats on the plane, which requires training and expertise. Additionally, these workers need skills, including being proficient in multiple languages like American Sign Language for deaf passengers and understanding the diverse needs of their clients. Moreover, it is essential that the workforce is diverse in order to account for the needs and preferences of travelers. The responsibility of these workers is critical from ensuring that passengers with disabilities reach their flights on time to staying with them until they are safely boarded their flights. Professional airport service workers with these skills are essential to safe and dignified travel. The Port Authority has been a national leader on the importance of competitive wages to ensure a stable and qualified workforce. However, wage standards at JFK, LaGuardia, and Newark have now fallen below the local cost of living, and these employees increasingly face considerable financial strain due to inadequate compensation. Currently, these essential workers earn only $19 per hour, significantly less than the living wage of $28 per hour needed in the New York, New Jersey metro area for a single individual without dependents. This disparity not only impacts their financial stability, but also undermines the quality of care they can provide. It is crucial to pay them a livable wage to ensure they are motivated and well-equipped to offer the highest standard of care. Competitive pay is crucial to attract and retain the highly skilled professionals needed to deliver the caliber of service that passengers with disabilities require. Sydney urges the Port Authority Board to take decisive action to raise wages and benefits for these indispensable workers. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Jacqueline Guilty. Jacqueline. Good afternoon, board Good afternoon. general public. My name is Jacqueline Giddy. I work at OTG Terminal C for the last six years. 
making $19 an hour. I'm a single mother of four and proud member of Unite Here Local 100. This is not the first time that I'm here and I plan to attend as many board meeting, meetings as I possibly can. It's impossible to survive on $19 per hour. It isn't enough to keep up with the increased cost of living. My coworkers and I are asking to raise the minimum wage for airport and airline catering workers with a multi-year standard and guarantee parity in health insurance, vacation, and holiday standards for New York and New Jersey. It's time for all these companies to give the workers who make the companies or generate the company's money enough support to take care of themselves and their families. One job should be enough. We need a wage that lets us live comfortably. Workers like me have seen our rent, bills, groceries, and the price of just about everything rise. We need wage increases to raise standards for airport and airline catering workers. When we fight, we win. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Patrick Jean. Good afternoon, and thank you, commissioners, for having me. My name is Patrick Jean, and I work at Sky Chef Airlines Catering at JFK, and I'm a proud member of the United Here Local 100 and a leader at my workplace. We have seen how rent and cost of living have drastically increased on average for a single person. The cost of living is about 4130 per month, let alone a family of four where the average is 8925 per month. Definitely most of my coworkers seeking for a second job. We urgently need a minimum wage of $25 for the airport and airlines catering workers with a multi-year standard and guaranteed parity in health insurance. Vacations and holiday standards for New York and New Jersey. We all know that while the Healthy Terminal Act across the river benefits concession workers, that is unfortunately not the case for the concession workers at LaGuardia and JFK airports. We need a wage that let us live comfortably. Workers like me have seen our rent, bills, groceries, and the price of just about everything else a person needs to get, get by go up and up. We need a wage increase. Raise standards for airport and airline catering workers. One job should be enough. When we fight, we win. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Harriet Thompson? Harriet? Already, uh, Jason Anthony, we have a video. Yeah, a video statement. Yep. Unfortunately, I couldn't join you guys today due to classes. Uh, several things I want to bring quickly. We turn that up there. Uh, I want to accept that at the uh, 30 bus terminal, I write three consoles due to uh, civility issues, but uh. This advisory board is ableist. This has to be corrected immediately. Uh, we want to know when you guys are going to meet with accessibility advocates like myself and Christopher D. Greif and Deborah Greif. Uh, well, we want to know when you guys are going to fix signages at the Port Authority bus terminal and other destinations. Well, we're going to make this short and sweet. Uh, that's all I have to say for this month. Thank you very much. Thank you. Another video. Matt uh, Bucky's Highland. Chairman, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Matty W. Bucky's Highland. Well, well, I do appreciate speaking at these Port Authority meetings and sending you video statements. I promise you I'll come in person one day, either in New York or in Jersey City. I wish there was a boat of... of option as well, speaking to you live via teleconference, such as Zoom like the MTA does. I saw you that visit. I, I saw you that stuff. So anyway, with that being said, please have a great 
weekend, and God bless each other. And now send back to the Honorable Kevin J. O'Toole in Jersey City. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> Thank you. Is that uh, any more uh, speakers? That is all. Statements or videos? Okay. Uh, thank you. We'll now proceed with the voting of items. Each of the respective committee chairs will provide a brief report prior to each of the matters being considered. As chair of the Committee on Operations, I'll now present three items. The first item, which was presented in committee earlier today, authorizes a 15-year agreement with New York Waterway to operate and maintain a Brookfield Place and Hoboken Ferry Terminals, including provision of ferry service between the terminals. Prior to making a motion, I want the board secretary to note any recusals. There are none. Any comments or questions? Motion, please. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Chairman O'Toole? Yes. Vice Chairman Linford? Yes. Commissioner Bullwage? Yes. Commissioner Fine? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Yes. Commissioner <laughs> Kelly? Yes. Commissioner LaBarbera? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Richardson? Yes. Commissioner Rosado? Yes. Um, Chairman Commissioner Eve asked that um, her affirmative vote be filed with the board. Terrific. All the votes are in order. The item is approved. The next item authorizes a new lease, lease with DNEL Supply LLC for the operation of 66 duty-free shops at Terminal B at Newark Liberty International Airport for a seven-year term with three one-year options to renew the lease. The leasee will pay approximately $33 million in rent over the initial term of the lease and invest at least $4.5 million in space, initially an additional $2.2 million by the fifth anniversary of the lease. Prior to making any motions, I ask for any recusals. There are no recusals. Any commissioners have a, co a comment or question? Motion. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Chairman O'Toole? Yes. Vice Chairman Linford? <clears throat> yes. Commissioner Bullway? Yes. Commissioner Fine? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner LaBarbera? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Richardson? Yes. Commissioner Rosado? Yes. And Commissioner Eve is also for yes. affirmative vote. Votes are in order. The items approved. Next item. Approves a collective bargaining agreement with the Port Authority Field Supervisors Association, which represents 284 Port Authority supervisory personnel. This agreement was ratified by the union members on September 6, 2024. The agreement's for a 38-month period. Prior to making a motion, I ask the Corporate Secretary if there's any recusals. There are no recusals. Uh, any comments or questions from commissioners? Motion, please. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. Chairman O'Toole? Yes. Vice Chairman Linford? Yes. Commissioner Bullwage? Yes. Commissioner Fine? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. Commissioner LaBarbera? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Richardson? Yes. Commissioner Rosado? Yes. And Commissioner Reed is yes. also a yes. Noted, and the votes are in order. This item has been approved.